thankfully, the valley has seen some rain this past week, somewhat improving the air quality. But for those who suffer from asthma and even some who haven't actually been diagnosed with the condition, have been experiencing an increase in respiratory problems. Well, Destiny and Farhad are from the Central California Asthma Collaborative, and they join us now with some important information that everybody should know regarding asthma. Thanks a lot for being here with us today. Thanks for having us. Okay, so first off, let's talk about what the Asthma Collaborative does. Sure. Um, well, we're a newly formed nonprofit here. Um, we've been in existence for the last couple of years, and what we do is our aim is to reduce the burden of childhood asthma here in the Central Valley. And we have two programs currently that we have. It's, um, one is the Healthier Living Schools program. Um, it's a really great program that we're trying to encourage more schools to adopt. Um, actually, tomorrow we're going to be having a press event um, in Tulare at Cypress Elementary School to highlight the benefits of the program. And then also we have another program where we do in-home assessments um, to find out what asthma triggers might be causing a child's asthma, and that's our um, asthma impact model. Wonderful. Now, before it rained this past week, the Valley was seeing record number of consecutive bad air quality days. Um, how has that affected people with asthma and those who actually have not been diagnosed with asthma? Well, for those individuals that um, have asthma, so the way the rain works, it essentially clears out our system, so it brings in more moisture into the air, and that's the biggest thing. So those individuals that don't have asthma, or do have asthma, I'm sorry, um, they're more exposed to dust and other particles in the air that usually would be cleared out with the rain. So for individuals with asthma, that's actually a trigger for their asthma. It starts up those asthma episodes, but for everybody else, it can lead to um, just bad air quality in general, which can lead to various respiratory issues. So. Let's talk about asthma. I, I think there's the assumption that it's kind of a, you know, can't, can't get your breath, but what, what truly are the symptoms? So it's really dependent on the person itself. Mm -hmm. um, some typical asthmatic symptoms are your passageways, your long airways actually um, squeeze together and get swollen and shut. Um, you can have some nighttime coughing, wheezing, shortness of breath, um, and just maybe generally chest tightness and tight pressure. Mm. On and your is chest. this the same for adults and for children? Correct. Yes. Okay. Well, other than, of course, uh, the, other than the, the air quality, what are some of the things that can trigger asthma in people uh, that may not know that they have it? Uh, what are some of the symptoms there? Um, well, I'm glad you asked that. There are a lot of um, different triggers. Um, some of the triggers that we find in the home are mold, um, again, dust, pollen, um, and some also pets also can be a trigger as well. Stress is also a trigger. Um, even if you're feeling very stressed, you can, that can be a trigger for asthma as well. You talked about uh, coming into homes and helping people. Uh, can anyone benefit from this? How, how how could we learn more? If somebody sees that list and says, oh my gosh, I want to know if you could come through my house and tell me. Well, currently we're, um, the program is um, for Fresno County and we're, our clients are mostly through the Clinico Sierra Vista. Um, we're hoping to expand the program, but right now um, we're limited to Clinico okay. Sierra Vista patients. Very good. And can you develop asthma at any age or are you just born with it? It's actually both. So you can either develop asthma at a later state in time, mm -hmm. or you can actually have a pre or a genetic predisposition to it. So it can either be genetic or environmental based. Mm -hmm. So here in the Valley, what um, a possible theory for so many people having asthma is that there is a, pre a genetic predisposition, but because the air quality is so poor, um, it can actually trigger a, mm -hmm. a person's asthma. Well, how can you avoid some of those triggers? Um, well, it's kind of dependent. There are indoor triggers, again, like Destiny had mentioned, dust. Um, you can stay out of smoke-filled areas. You can keep mattress and pillow covers that are dust-proof. Um, you can clean moldy surfaces, keep showers clean, exercise, um, which actually makes your lungs stronger, so uh, you can breathe a little easier. And just, in general, don't leave your car idling. So. Okay. There are some really great things that you can uh, cover your mattresses with, and, and even your pillows. Mm -hmm. Do those work, do you think? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's an investment that seems to be worth it. It's definitely an investment, but if your child or, your, or if you're experiencing asthma, I mean, it's, it's worth 
bad investment. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for coming on. We really appreciate your time and information today. Thank, Thank you. you so much. So if you'd like any more information on the Central California Asthma Collaborative and how they're trying to improve the lives of those who are living with asthma, log on to KMPH.com, click news links right there on the homepage. It's